Hello everyone and welcome back to another groovy 60s video. Like I promised last time, we're going to be sticking in the 60s for a little while because I happened upon I think one of the most lucky finds of my life when I was thrifting. I do thrift online as well as in person and this particular thrift treasure was found online and it was a set of three sweater and skirt making kits. In the 50s and 60s and early 70s as far as I could tell, a few different companies would sell these sweater and skirt kits where the same exact yarn was used to make a yarn for you to knit a sweater with as well as enough fabric to make a coordinating skirt. So it was assumed that you knew how to sew and how to knit and a lot of the knitting patterns also had you crochet some edging on so you needed to have all those three skills in order to fully finish one of these kits. I happened to find three for all from the same company but different sellers in different colors and they were absolutely gorgeous and I knew that I wanted to make one of the kits. I didn't want to make all of them because I did want to preserve at least the original format of some. I put it out to my patrons on Patreon and they got to vote on which one to make and out of the three they chose this beautiful gray like it's a light gray color with speckles that are dominantly in like blue, yellow, green, and this peachy pink color. The other slight issue I ran into is that none of these skirt and sweater pattern kits came with their original sweater patterns. It did say that you use your own skirt pattern to make the skirts but I was hoping that at least one of them would have the sweater patterns in it but it didn't. So instead I went through my collection of 1950s, late 1950s and early 1960s sweater patterns and again asked my patrons to choose which pattern that I would knit but we ended up going with this particular pattern that I I was so excited to make. It's a raglan sleeve sweater, but it's made in pieces rather than in the round, which I've never done. Also for this particular project, I thought it would be fun to see how many authentically vintage items and pieces that I could use because I've been collecting things through estate sales and thrift shops and vintage stores. So I will be using this vintage yarn for my sweater kit, use, knitting up a vintage sweater pattern. I found a vintage 60s skirt pattern that would hopefully, I would have, I'll have just enough fabric to make it. I have a vintage gray zipper that's going to work perfectly, I think, for the skirt as well as vintage buttons for the rest of the sweater. So all in all, I'm trying to go as authentically vintage as I can, but again, uh, like historically accurate is really a myth. I just thought it would be fun because I have all of these supplies on hand to see how many I could use them to make this particular kit. We have two pieces to make, so let's get right to knitting this sweater. So like many, many, many vintage patterns that I've knit, uh, the first set of instructions always starts with a back panel, so I typically tend to start that one as well. I don't often show me knitting the back panel because it's not frequently the most interesting panel of the piece, and it allows me to knit in the little bits of time that I have here and there to get ready to present it to you all. But because this is a little bit of a special sweater, because it's a raglan sweater that's done in pieces, I've knit them before, but only ever in the round. So I'm very curious to see how it will work in pieces. And I feel like the sewing together of the separate pieces will be very important for this. So I am now up to the point of the decreases for the back portion. So I wanted to show you basically how that's going. Let's work on some decreases. Okay, so I am here at this bit of the back. So I have worked even until the piece measures. I went to 13 and a half inches because I've got a short torso. So I always like them to be a little bit longer. I ended with a pro row and now we're gonna shape the raglan armholes. So I'm a little confused because here it says at the beginning of each of the next two rounds, bind off two stitches. Or for me, I guess three stitches because I'm working the next size up and then work as follows. So I guess first I decrease three on each side and then I work on the raglan armhole. So, or do I work the raglan at the same time? You know what? I'm gonna do some math and see how I end up at this number of stitches at the end and I will get back to you with the answer. Okay, so I did end up with the right number of stitches with this option, but it, I, I did realize that it doesn't matter. Like the math will work out either way that I choose to do it. So my option one is that I knit two rows with a bind off and then I start the raglan decreases 
Or what I can do is do two rows of the bind off while at the same time doing the raglan decreases. Um, I personally prefer a deeper armhole. So what I'm gonna do is first bind off and then start the decreases for the raglan after that, if that makes sense. So that was a little fun math exercise, but unnecessary. <laughs> few days later and I have now finished the back panel of this cardigan. I love the yarn even more now that it's knit up because I feel like I can really see, I think they're called nips and that's kind of what gives tweeds those little flecks of color and you can really see them come together. It's this whole field. We have blues, greens, yellows, and like this peachy pink color that's just so beautiful I think when it all comes together. There's just so much more dimension to this in color. So the back is finished. I think you can really see the raglan decreases on each of the sides here by the armholes. I did make sure to pay attention as closely as I could because you do want the decreases to kind of lean towards each other in a raglan. So you do knit two together on one and a slip one, knit one, pass slip slip over on the other because you want them to be one left leaning, one right leaning. Typically vintage sweaters that I've knit in the past are four separate pieces, the front panel, the back panel, and one panel for each sleeve. However, because this is a cardigan, uh, this is going to be five panels. So I just finished the one panel for the back and I'm gonna need two panels for the front. And I have already finished the front bottom ribbing of each side. I've decided to do kind of like a semi two at a time again for this one so that it goes a little bit quicker and a little bit more seamlessly. And yeah, so now I'm gonna do the front panels of this cardigan. And I just have to remember that I have to do the shaping for the armhole on opposite sides. I don't want two right front panels. I want one right front panel, one left front panel. So I have been working for a bit on the two front panels. This is the front right. And here we have the front left. And the way that I can tell, so I've been working two at a time, um, is that I've actually put a knitting marker on the side that I'm increasing because for each of these front panels the front middle stays straight and the front side gets increased until the underarm point. So I think I have one more increase to do on each one of these until I get to the amount of stitches that I need and then I just need to make it the same length as my back piece to the underarms before I start doing the decreases. So I'll just continue knitting back and forth on these two panels. I'm at the last bit of the sweater, which is the sleeves, and I'm going to be knitting them two at a time on straight needles. Now, I am currently not at home, and I, of course, forgot to bring the right size needles for the rest of it, and yes, I could find some, but I'm honestly a little too lazy for that. So I'm going to just knit a little bit looser to hopefully mimic the larger needle size that I'm supposed to use for the stockinette part of these sleeves. So let's do that. So I have finished knitting the length of both of my sleeves. You might have noticed in some of the footage though, as both of the sleeves were growing and I'm knitting with one of them, like the weight of it is definitely pulling on my needles and making it harder for me to knit. So while I'm doing the raglan decreases on each one, I think I'm gonna put just, I'll do one at a time and I'll put the other one on probably its own tail <laughs> yarn <laughs> and have it on hold there until I get to that one. So. That is the last bit of this knitting, which is to do the raglan decreases on the sleeves. And as usual, 
I made a bit of a mistake by staying up late and trying to finish my knitting. I didn't do the decreases properly, and so I had to spend extra time unraveling a bunch of work on this particular sleeve to put in the decreases. I considered it not doing it, but I decided that it was too important for the sleeve to fit properly, so I went back and I redid it. I'd rather have it fit well. I did wanna say that last night I did end up reversing back to where I made the mistake and I re-knit the rest of it so I'm finished with all five pieces for this cardigan. So today my task is to sew it all up, um, add the crochet border and buttonholes and the buttons and then the sweater is finished but not the whole kit so we still have the skirt to make. I've gotten a few comments on trying to keep Nutella's noise to a minimum when I'm talking and filming these videos. And she seems to think that when I'm talking to no one, she needs to make noise to make me look a little less out there for speaking to myself. Yeah, anytime I stop talking, she stops making noise. But the moment I start talking again, there she goes. <laughs> Okay, you tell me, why don't you come here and I can, I can snuggle you. Anyhow, I was knitting, knitting through the knitting instructions. I guess I was knitting through the knitting pattern instructions, but I was reading the finishing instructions and the way it has you seam it up is to sew the sleeves to the fronts and back first, and then you sew up the side seams and the underarms. And if you saw my Valentine's Day sweater, video, then you'll know that I've been unraveling sweaters right now in order to reuse them in my own knitting. And I've noticed that, that is a way that a lot of commercial sweaters are seamed up. So I just thought that was like an interesting detail. Usually I seam up the shoulders and sides of the body, then the underarm seam of the sleeves, and then I set the sleeves into the armhole. So this is just a little bit different way of doing it. And I guess I'll show you what I mean a little bit. So. I'll show you, once I'm finished seaming it up, I'll show you what it looks like when I have just the sleeves sewn to the front and backs, and then I will show you what side seam they want you to sew up, and it's kind of one nice long continuous side seam from the side body through to the underarm sleeve. And then the cardigan's ready for the crochet border. My new sweater is all seamed up and I love it. Let me try it on really quickly for you guys. Now, you might think, now that I've seamed the whole sweater up, that, you know, aren't you done? Isn't it finished? And the answer is no. Can you see here how these fronts are rolling under? Um, if you don't know much about knitting or if you're new to knitting, stockinette stitch, which is where you knit and purl in flat knitting, will curl under because of the shape of the individual sh uh, stitches is curved or cupped. So flat stockinette knitting will always curl under and you need something to prevent that from happening. That's why on the bottom here, it's not curling because it's ribbed. Same with the bottom of the sleeves. We have ribbing here and ribbed knitting does not curl because you're counteracting it with every other stitch. They're kind of cupped together like this so they don't curl over. Something that isn't mentioned in a lot of vintage books, uh, especially vintage knitting patterns, is they assume that you can crochet. Many times, and I've knit patterns like that in the past, they ask you to finish it with crochet edging, and that is the case here. So we are going to go pick up my crochet hook and I'm gonna add the band of crochet that goes here up and around the collar and down the other side and that will help this kind of stand up like it's designed to and it'll add the button placket and buttonholes for me to be able to close this cardigan. Alright, so the sweater is finished and I've just pressed it. It really needed a pressing, um, but oh my gosh, it already looks so good. I actually think that maybe the sleeves are the right circumference. 
But again, we'll have to see, I think, what the skirt finished. Now I'm at the point of adding buttons. I do have these buttons from an estate sale. This is an estate sale I think I went to years ago at this point and it had an amazing selection of vintage buttons and zippers that I, of course, bought all of. If you wanna see that whole haul, um, I'll link the video, but uh, remember it's a few years old now. As I'm holding them up to this particular jacket, I'm kind of feeling like the lighter buttons are right. Yeah, that's what the dark buttons look like. They don't look bad. I just feel like it's a hint too much contrast. I feel like with this particular outfit, because the skirt and the sweater matches so closely, I don't really want the buttons to contrast that much. That's a little bit more what that button would look like, which I think goes a little bit more with the matchy matchy nature of this particular outfit. So I'm gonna sew these vintage buttons on and then I'm going to move on to making this skirt. I won't show you the finished sweater until we get to the final reveal. So let's work on the skirt portion of this skirt and sweater kit. It's so satisfying to have the sweater done, but now I am super excited to get to the second part of this kit, but also incredibly nervous, I won't lie. With knitting, if you make some mistakes, you can always unravel and re-knit. With sewing, when you cut out fabric, if I cut it out incorrectly, it's not as easy to fix. But I mean, look at this fabric. I'm pretty sure I mentioned this at the beginning, but this fabric is woven from the exact same yarn that I knit the sweater from. So this fabric is an exact match to the yarn from my sweater. I love that idea. I haven't measured exactly how much fabric I have, but it did say in the box that it should be enough for one yard skirt patterns. And I found this Vogue skirt pattern from the 1960s. It's Proportion Skirt 1354. I thought this was such a cool idea. So it's basically, we'd call it maybe an A-line skirt. And it goes from view A, which uses the least amount of fabric, to view C, which uses the most amount of fabric. So each one uses a little bit more fabric, kind of depending on how much you have. And it also comes in three sizes. So every view comes in short, average, and tall, which I appreciate. I often have to do pattern modifications. I might've talked about this in the past. Um, I'm a little taller than average, I'm 5'9", so it makes me have to sometimes make things longer. Most of my height is in my torso though, so usually skirts are okay, but it's nice to have the option to do the tall. Although we do have some wiggle room because I read through this pattern and it's a three inch hem. 38 hip, 28 waist, which is a little small for me, but it's not very far off. Like it's just one size smaller than I need. So if I need to make any modifications, it shouldn't be too bad. Like it's, it's not that drastic of a difference. But the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take out all the pattern pieces and starting with the view that needs the least amount of fabric, so view A, I'm going to lay that out on my final bit of fabric to see which view I could potentially make, keeping in mind that I might have to make the skirt like a little wider, at least to the waist, to fit me properly. So let's lay that out and see what we can do with it. to show you this I laid the three different pattern lengths on top of each other we have tall at the bottom short and then average in the middle and the one in the middle the average looks like someone trimmed it fully out and potentially chopped off length at the bottom there I'm kind of on the edge here because my ideal like looking at the three pattern options that I have my favorite oh that's weird lighting my favorite is view B, the one in the middle there, which means that I need that little waist belt. And I have like with a tall version, I have like just enough. Oh, I'm sorry about the lighting. We have no curtains here, so I can't change it. <laughs> this is just bright daylight. Um, but at that top strip right there, there's like just enough to get the belt out. So what I might do I might just take like an inch and a half off the length of the skirt patterns to make sure that I have enough to eke out the belt for UB. I think that this precious of fabric 
needs a mock-up first. I need to make sure that that skirt fits me before I try anything. With cutting it out from such a precious fabric source, I cannot get any more of this. Like this is, that's all I have. <sighs> okay, maybe I feel like now I'm just stressing myself out and I really don't wanna make a mistake. Okay, but that's why we're doing the mock-up. We're doing the mock-up. So let's start with that. Oh, and then one last thing in case you were interested because I was, what is the pattern considering short, average, and tall? Short for them is five foot three and under. Average is five foot four to five foot eight. And tall is five foot nine and above. If you're five foot eight and a half or five foot three and a half, I'm not exactly sure <laughs> what the pattern wants you to do, but <laughs> I'm sure we could figure it out. <sighs> okay, so. The mock-up is done. I didn't have an immediate access to a sewing machine, so I hand sewed everything. So I didn't sew the full seams down the sides of the skirt because I just didn't see the point. I just needed to see how it fit over my hips. So I went to like a little past the widest part of my hips. And I did some alterations already at the beginning because I know that I need a larger waist size. I increased it by two inches. So there were two darts in the back of this skirt. Um, that were a half an inch each. And I only did one on each side, so that took out an inch. And then I took out half an inch in each of the darts here at the front, so that was another inch. So now the top of the skirt matches my waistband. So you can see the waistband now fits and the top of the skirt fits well into that. It's hard to hold clothes properly. Um, but this skirt and how it goes over my hips is way too tight. I definitely need more room. The length is good with a three inch seam. I'm glad I went with a tall. Okay, <laughs> let's do mock-up number two. All right, so mock-up number two is in the books. And whoops, I think it is maybe like a hint on the wide side um, up here. And I could like pinch out this much. But even though that's the case, what I think I'm gonna do is um, cut out the pieces using this size of pattern piece because I know it's definitely not too small and it's on the larger size, size, <laughs> size and side uh, for me personally. So I can always take in the side seams if I need to. I'm back home after visiting my family and I have started unpacking things. And so I just got back to looking at the mock-up for my skirt, for my sweater and skirt kit. I remember I said that I was, you know, good with mock-up number two and I was just gonna cut it out from the pattern. But to be honest, I'm just unhappy with how the skirt piece fits into the waistband. The waistband is the perfect width for me now. Um, and it does say on the skirt to ease it in, but I feel like there's so many spots where I'm basically like, look at that, the amount of pucker I had there. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bust out the pattern pieces and do adjustments to the pattern pieces so that the pattern pieces at the top, at the seam line, match exactly with the width of the waist. And then I'm gonna make <laughs> mock-up number three. <laughs> just finished mock-up number three and I think the lines on the hips are so much better. I still have like a few inconsistencies especially here at the side seams so I think I'm gonna pay a lot closer attention to that when I'm sewing up the finished one. I guess the next thing is I'm gonna cut this out of my fabric. Oh boy. <laughs> Alright well I ironed the fabric. I ironed my pattern pieces. I laid them out and I think it's looking really good. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut. I ate a snack, I drank water, so hopefully I'll have nice and steady hands for this. Wish me luck. I just got done cutting out the first skirt piece and I don't know if you can tell, but I can feel it. Like I literally, the just color the redness in my face from the pure concentration and like stress of cutting this. I can't believe I cut it. Cross everything you have that I'm doing this correctly. I did three mock-ups. I laid everything out multiple times. It should work. Okay, let's keep going.
of the things I mentioned way back at the beginning of the video is that I would be using as many vintage pieces to make this whole skirt and sweater kit as I could. And one of those is this vintage zipper specifically made for skirt plackets. It's a vintage metal zipper and it's in this beautiful gray, which is exactly right for my skirt. How lucky is that? This is another piece of my estate sale finds. And I also loved reading through the instructions that were a part of the zipper. And I'm pretty sure that when I did up this zipper and I sewed it together, I followed instructions that the closet historian uses a lot of times for her particular uh, zipper insertions. If you watch the closet historian, she does this method as well. While I really enjoy wearing skirts, one of the reasons that I don't love wearing vintage skirts is that they oftentimes are really not flexible or stretchy in the waist. I know that my waist changes in size when I sit down, when I eat, when I breathe, and I want it to be comfortable and I want to be able to wear this skirt. So I tried this out. I didn't watch a tutorial anywhere or anything. I just thought of adding a little bit of elastic to the top of where the zipper attaches to my skirt and to the top of the waistband, just to give myself that little extra bit of give to hopefully make this skirt just that much more comfortable to wear. The wool is itself kind of stretchy, even not on the bias. So that gives me a little flexibility, but I just wanted to add a little bit more because again, I wanna wear this skirt a lot. Okay, so I don't wanna spoil the whole reveal for you quite yet, so that's why you're only seeing this bit of it, but you know how I was worried about the sleeve being too baggy? Now that I have the whole outfit on, I, I don't think that it is. The only thing that concerns me is if I put my sleeves up, it kinda of wants to ride down easily, but you know, that's pretty easily fixed just by cuffing it, and then that really likes to stay in place a little bit easier, so. I am now going to go straight to the final reveal of this outfit. Honestly, that this whole skirt and sweater kit was one of the most fun things I've made and some of the most technically accurate sewing I have ever done for the skirt. I learned a lot from watching The Closet Historian, from watching Retroclad. Her series over um, the holidays were so informative to me. I used so many of those tips to really make this skirt finish so professionally and fits so well. So thank you so much, Claude. I highly recommend watching that if you're thinking of doing any kind of sewing. And she also does wonderful vintage knitting. I really enjoyed adding this entry to my knitting journal because I was able to add this little scrap of fabric as well for the skirt. This was just such a joy. Of course, I used my knitting journal stickers to decorate this particular entry in my knitting journal. And if you are interested in those stickers as well, I do sell them in my Etsy shop and the link will be down below in the description and in a pinned comment. Um, I've been having so much fun sending them out to you all. So thank you so much for supporting me in that way. I have one more 60s video coming up for you all. I can't wait. I feel like it finishes my 60s capsule wardrobe. Thank you again for watching. If you feel like it, please feel free to subscribe and I will see you all again very, very soon. Bye. I'm